Hello, my friend and friends. When it comes to CSS, and especially for creating layouts, you'll often hear that you should use a mobile first approach. It's just this generally accepted idea of how responsive websites should be made these days. You'll hear just general advice given out basically everywhere. I've even said it myself quite a lot. All of the big frameworks use it like Bootstrap and Tailwind and basically all of the other ones. And there's a reason that they use it and it's a pretty good one. But I'm here to tell you that actually I think the idea of approaching things in a mobile first way is a little bit flawed and potentially can lead to some overly complicated code. Now I'm gonna start by using this uh, navigation Navigation as an example. So I have this navigation that we can see right here and my face is covering it. So let's get out of the way. And uh, yeah, you know, a hamburger menu that you might have, especially when we're on smaller sites and we often want to add in or, you know, it looks a little bit different when we're on larger screen sizes where we just have the regular navigation. Uh, but I use navigation often for this example of uh, why there's issues with mobile first at times, but I think it applies to other things as well. Another one that's common that people struggle with on mobile side is tables. There's also like timeline elements and other things where it can just get a little bit more complex to actually make it work at mobile. And it, it sort of leans into the idea also of why mobile first is taken off and especially why more generic frameworks 100% need to lean into that side of things. Uh, and it's that most things that we're creating they are simpler when we're on mobile, they stack, right? So if we have like, we'll come back to this example, but like here we have this complicated grid like this one, but if I go in and, and like look at it at smaller screen sizes, things just start stacking one on top of each other, which is the default behavior. I don't have to create this layout. All I have to do is add some spacing between my elements and I'm adding complexity as the screen size gets bigger. And this is sort of the normal way that things work, right? We have more complexity at larger screen sizes, but not everything works that way. And I think we should be looking at it rather than mobile first is the path of least resistance. Or what's the way I can do something by writing the least amount of code possible? Because that just makes it a lot easier to maintain in the long run. Let's look at this as like a concrete example where if I took a mobile first approach, I'd have all of this stuff in place and I finished my mobile one, I'm happy with it, everything worked. And now I have to, I'm now tasked with coming in to make this work at larger screen sizes. So that means I'm coming all the way down to the bottom somewhere and I'm gonna come in with my media query. Uh, we have to decide on a breakpoint and that's always fun, right? <laughs> what breakpoint do we use? It's one of the more common questions I get asked for now. I'm using 750 because why not? Uh, and I have to figure out the different things that I'm going to do. So then I have to come in and look a little bit at what I have. So I have my prime, well, look at that. My primary navigation is a display absolute right now because of sort of how I wanted to position it and I wanted it overlapping everything. So that definitely has to change. I need to change the primary header. And of course we have like the open and close states that I'm dealing with when I have like right right now. So those also could be different. So I guess the, the position absolute is one, I guess the first thing we'd want to get rid of. So let's come down here and we can choose. That was my primary, primary navigation. And so we can throw on their position I guess static to go back to the default and that's always felt kind of weird to me when we have to go back to a default value and there's other ways of doing that but we'll, we'll sort of stick with the actual values here uh, so I can do the position static I mean I still can't see it and that's happening I think because I have a display none on there so let's actually bring in like a display of block on it so we can see it now to get rid of that display none when it's hidden away except even that's not working and that's probably not working you know what that's I had a a, 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 maybe I need an important on there. There we go. I can actually see it now. So I need the important on there. Right? I guess I'd have to raise. Okay, we don't want the important because that's kind of weird, but I need to raise the specificity. I could use that weird thing that I know to like double a selector like that because that's a fun way to boost specificity, right? Uh, that makes it so much better than important, I guess, uh, in a way. <laughs> uh, at least it's showing up on the page. Uh, maybe I don't want to display flex, uh, a block. I mean, I want flex so they actually go next to each other. That's getting better. I don't want to see my button because I don't really want a button that's going to work. I think that's my menu toggle. So with that, we can display none it to get rid of it at smaller screens or bigger screen sizes. Uh, the icons too, I don't need. Those are my site nav icon. Uh, we can get rid of those. Okay, good, those are gone now, so that's better. Now I need to get rid of that purple background. I think that's coming from here, so we can do a background of transparent. That's kind of weird because we had a transparent background, we added it in there. They have this weird line showing up, and that's because all of my elements except, like when I open this up, all of them have like that little underline on them, so I need to get rid of that next, right? So that would be my, uh, 
dot primary navigation li can have a border of zero and there we go so that's better those are gone now we have that weird hover that's coming on the link so we need to get rid of that so i guess we can duplicate this and grab those and once again the background gets to go back to transparent and then here the uh padding i think is huge so we can get rid of that padding that's on there just to make that a little better and i think you get the idea we're getting there now we're fi we're finally reaching a point that that works and it looks a little bit better and it, it's you know fitting more with what you'd expect from a navigation but having to declare a position static and then having a background transparent and having to put borders to zero even though they had no border to begin with doing that again here it, these are all things that i'm redeclaring to go back to what the default values were and to me that's a nightmare i hate doing this so much i feel like i'm wasting so much time and to be fair like here's an example where i did it the other way around and it's not that there's a ton less code and i'm not doing like a between media query like from this size to that size but if i just came in and i say my primary navigation and i'm setting this all up for larger screen sizes it's all there it's all working everything's fine I set my hover styles, I get everything working the way I want in the simple form, not at the small screen size form, at just the simplest way it's going to appear on the screen, right? So I'm trying to do like the least amount of styling. There is this one thing that's a little bit annoying because I don't want those icons here, but then I can come in with my media query and I can add that complexity in. So now I'm, you know, mucking around a little bit with some of those things that I did set. But then I'm adding positioning, I'm adding the top and the right, I'm adding a background color, I'm adding my transitions to my clip paths, and I'm adding the animations in, and my borders are coming in that I don't have to like reset on something. And then I'm adding padding in on elements that didn't have padding. So it's less about overwriting stuff and it's just adding extra code in within that media query to say, I only want these to apply at the certain screen size. And you could take this that next step further and you could definitely say, you know, I'm gonna put in, I don't wanna bother with something necessarily uh, like this. So maybe you end up having another way of writing it where you're you're using the ranges more, right? So like between this size and this size and between this size and that size. But I find doing that, it, at one point you get diminishing returns on the complexity of your code. And again, it's not to say that mobile first isn't the right approach. It's just like mobile first tends to be the approach where you write the least amount of code because you're adding complexity to most of the elements on your screen. But you're not gonna be doing that for everything within your layout. And the other thing that I sort of want to mention here while we're talking about this is, do you even need the media query? <laughs> so let's just, let's take all of this complexity out. This is a lot of code, right? There's a lot going on here. Maybe there's a few things I could have done a little bit simpler, but you know, let's take all of that out. And now we just have this navigation that, oh no, it, it's overflowing. That, that looks kind of ugly. I don't really like that. But, um, and CodePen apparently doesn't want to show, <laughs> there we go, there, it's all commented out now wasn't updating the colors. Maybe I delete the side icon. I don't even have one in there. Uh, and then where I have this display flex, I just say that we have a flex wrap of wrap. And it probably won't be perfect in this layout just because we have the logo on the other side. But like if I run out of room, and you can see it's kind of ugly at the moment, but like if I run out of room, uh, is that really the worst possible thing that could happen? And even if I came here and let's just add a gap of like three RAM or four RAM, uh, and then like as this breaks and then we just get my navigation like wrapping, um, maybe you don't want this like this in this one situation because it's taking up a ton of screen real estate and on mobile that's a problem and with the logo being here, um, it's not really great either. Flex wrap of wrap on this just to show that like there are ways that we could like, you know, this the whole thing wraps underneath and then as we run out of room like is, is this really the worst thing in the world? Uh, maybe you think it is, and I mean, you could definitely reduce the spacing on this so we're not taking up so much space, but just from a simplicity point of view, when we can let the browser figure out the best way to do it without complex code, sometimes that's a lot nicer as well. And actually, speaking of this idea of intrinsic design, if it is something that you'd like to learn more about, it is a, a term that was coined by Jen Simmons a little while ago now, and it's a topic that I talk quite a bit about the benefits of uh, in one of my latest podcast episodes, because yes, I do have a podcast now, so if you're interested in that, uh, you can find the links to it in the description. There's a second YouTube channel if you like watching podcasts on YouTube, but it's also available as just a regular podcast as well in all the, the apps that you use for podcasting and stuff. So if that sounds interesting to you, once again, the link is in the description. But let's jump back to the code now. And another example I have for that is layouts like this one, where you can just use a grid with like your min max media query, right? 
and I don't have any media queries for something like this and it just works and everything just flows and it stacks where it needs to stack and you know it's super nice and I'm not stressed about <laughs> this should happen at this breakpoint and this should happen at this breakpoint and if you saw my tutorial on this you know I looked at container queries so we did add some complexity to this as well but it's it's about you know when we can lean into the browser I think it's a really good idea <laughs> to lean into the browser and let the browser decide on how to handle things like that. So like, here's the code for this part, right? And really the only thing that's important here for like getting that grid to work is this one line. We have a display, this isn't actually doing anything, but we have the display of grid, we have a gap, and then we have the columns on there, right? If I have that th these three things on there, then, and this was just more stuff that I was covering in the demo, but if this is all we have in there, and even let's, let's turn these off just to show you that it's still gonna work, uh, and everything, you're right, everything is still there, it's still working, and it works really well. And there's times where, is it mobile first? Not really, I'm just, it's just, here's my layout, and here's how I want the browser to solve that. And so like the reliance on media queries sometimes can be a little bit much, but that's not to say that we can get away from media queries either. There are times we need them, such as when we have a layout like I was looking at here. Now in a case like this, because of the way things are spanning across, that auto fit thing that I was looking at just now might not work so well, just because it, you know we, we sort of need to define when these changes are actually happening to get it to work within the layout that we have a little bit. Uh, but And I, I don't think that's much in you know, the end of the world. And I think I've actually overdone it in this example, because here I have a media query uh, for, you know, we have the smallest one. So at small screen sizes, everything just stacks because we don't have to stress about it. We add a little bit of complexity. So at this screen size, I change it. And then at this next screen size, once again, I can change the layout a little bit. And then at this next screen size, I can go up to three columns and change the layout a little bit. And then from so on and so forth. Though if this was production, I, I think this is actually too many media queries potentially for something because it is a lot of different spots where things are changing. Uh, but it is just to say that, you know, depending on the complexity of the layout, don't shy away from media queries. They have their purpose. They have a point. We're always going to be using them, even if we don't have to rely on them as much. And we can come up with layouts like this and there's flex layouts. You know, I did this with grid, but there's definitely flex layouts that work really well like this as well. Whether it's the navigation like we were just looking at that wraps and just simplifies our life a little bit or a lot of other things where we can lean in and let the browser help us do the layout by giving it the small hints on the direction that we need it to go in. But all of this is just trying to say that, you know, minimizing the amount of code we are writing is usually for the best and trying to find the best solution for that. And it's just a very nuanced thing. And we like, you know, especially beginners always like having, uh, this is the answer. This is the right way to do something. And that's the only solution. And sadly, most things have a lot of nuance in them. But as long as you're critically thinking about it and trying to approach things in different ways, I think often you can come up with very robust, very good systems that work really well and that don't necessarily have to fit into like a certain very specific methodology or very certain specific way of working. And it might be for the better uh, as long as you can have a good reason that you're doing it. Like the navigation that I looked at where that if you do need that hamburger menu, I really do think that doing it with a Max with media query makes a heck of a lot more sense. Now, if you'd like to see more on that, like auto fit repeat syntax thing, as well as a few other Flexbox and grid-based layouts that are intrinsic and work without media queries. I have covered five of them in this video that is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Web On Demand, Andrew, Michael, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.